Recently, the French army used in some exercises the famous Spot from Boston Dynamics. Will we see robots like Spot on the battlefields of the future? Today we talk about robots and the military. So what happened is that at the end of March, Spot and other robots were tested by the French army in some military exercises. And the purpose of these military exercises was to assess how robots could support humans on the battlefield if there were some differences in the performance of the soldiers with or without the robots. Several robots were tested for these exercises. Spot specifically was tested as a reconnaissance robot. That is a typical application of this robot from Boston Dynamics. We've seen, in fact, Spot being used, for example, to explore caves or ancient mines or to scout construction sites. The rationale is that Spot, with this application, can avoid the soldiers from taking unnecessary risks. For example, for reconnaissance, you can use a robot, and if a robot is struck in combat, well, it's a robot and it's not a human. As I said, other robots were implemented during this exercise. For example, this kind of robot that can provide some mobile cover or this other robot that can instead provide some cargo capability. And according to the French soldiers, the results were pretty outstanding and pretty clear. Without the robots, they said, we would die. So apparently the robots were capable of providing a positive benefit, a positive asset to these military exercises. Although, we have to say, there have been some slightly minor issues. For example, talking about Spot specifically, apparently, according to the French soldiers, there have been some issues with Spot's battery. Apparently, the battery ran out during the operations and we have to carry physically the poor spot around. But this is not the first time that Boston Dynamics and specifically Robodogs from Boston Dynamics have worked with the military. For example, in the past, Big Dog, which is basically Spot's ancestor, a, a larger version, a larger Robodog than Spot, Big Dog was used by the US military as a cargo mule. It was used to support soldiers carrying around cargo instead of, you know, having the soldiers carry around this, all this payload. But apparently it was discontinued, this program, because the robot was too loud. Boston Dynamics has declared that for them, their robots are not supposed to be used as weapons. They're not supposed to cause any harm. And we could argue that acting like a cargo mule to support soldiers and or doing reconnaissance is not strictly harming, but in fact we have to go a little bit deeper when it comes to this application of robots. For example, talking about other Robodogs applications, there is to mention Ghost Robotics. Ghost Robotics is basically a Boston Dynamics competitor, is another company that is developing Robodogs, and last year they deployed at a US Air Force base some Robodogs to patrol the base. Again, these Robodogs, they were not armed. They just had some set of sensors and cameras, like, like for Spot, you know. They have some sensors that they can walk around and basically replace static surveillance cameras. But it still raises a question because some might wonder what is going to happen in the future. And in fact, the CEO of Ghost Robotics has said that, according to him, these robots might be deployed in actual war zones by, for example, 2022. The CEO of Ghost Robotics has envisioned applications like, as I said, scouting or defusing bombs. But someone might wonder if these machines are going to be used as actual weapons, if we're going to see, for example, machine guns mounted on the backs of these Robodogs and being used as actual weapons on battlefields. Now, here I'm personally speculating, I'm not an expert in warfare. My guess is that these Robodogs, at the moment, they don't have the flexibility and the capabilities compared to a human soldier, so that's why we're not seeing these robots being actually armed, we're just seeing them as being used for scouting or patrolling purposes. But armed robots, real robots with real guns, are not something new. It's just that they don't look like dogs. Rather, they look like turrets like this one, or drones, or tanks. There is a growing interest in what is called autonomous weapon systems, that are systems that can basically combat fight on their own. They can, for example, assess if a target is a friend or a foe with some specific algorithms. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking things like Skynet or Terminator or the robots are going to kill us all or something like that. But in fact, these systems are very far from true intelligence systems, from what we call artificial general intelligence, AGI, that is the AI that has human-like capabilities. Even the most advanced artificial intelligences are dumb compared to humans. And this is something that has been said many times by experts in the field. 
Coming back to the autonomous weapon systems, so talking about these systems, considering all of this, the worries about these things turning on us are pretty much science fiction at the moment. But still, there are important concerns. Autonomous weapon systems, autonomous weapons pose in fact some very important ethical and also juridical challenges. Now let's take for example autonomous cars. Now autonomous cars, there is very big ethical dilemma of what happens if an autonomous car runs over a pedestrian. You know, I'm talking about fully autonomous cars. So if a fully autonomous car runs over a pedestrian, who is to blame? Is it the algorithm? Is it the producer? Is it the programmer? It's a very important dilemma, but you might say that with autonomous cars, they should not run over pedestrians, so the autonomous cars should do whatever they can to avoid this scenario. But when it comes to robot killers, when it comes to robots that are programmed, designed to kill, if they kill the wrong target, if they mistake a civilian as a foe, what happens? Who is to blame? That is a very important question. That is in fact not the only concern that we have regarding autonomous weapon systems, it's just one of the many. But if you are really interested in this topic, I suggest you to check the website Stop Killer Robots, which is a campaign, a campaign set by some activists to stop the production of these machines. So to come back to Spot, Spot at the moment is a, just a robot being piloted around. It has very little autonomy and it has no intelligence, it has no emotion. It is just a machine that is being piloted with this joystick-like controller. But still, when it comes to robots and warfare, we have to keep our eyes open because threats might not look like robot dogs. Threats might not look like in science fiction. And at the same time, just because something looks a bit creepy and unnatural, like a robot dog, it does not mean that it's necessarily harmful. In fact, robot dogs can be helpful. They can help us humans. They can go, for example, where us humans cannot go. For example, Spot was used in, in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to scout the power plant and go where humans, it would be very dangerous for them to go. So it's only up to us to decide how we want to use these technologies. Now let me know what do you think in the comments, let me know what you think about robots in warfare and robot dogs and spot being used for this kind of application. And if you want to see more in the future, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I thank you very much for watching and I see you next time.